Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Payne, and welcome back to another anime review video, the first one of 2019, and I started it off the year with a huge fuck up. In case you didn't pay attention, at the end of my fall 2018 roundup video, I said that I was going to leave the choice of what the next show or movie that I was going to review to you guys, but the problem was is that I didn't even plan it. I didn't even write anything in advance or write any shows in advance or even say what shows are going to be in the running for the next video. So uh, the whole thing just went completely unnoticed. I didn't really feel good about it when I first did it and then I realized it was because I didn't really plan it and I didn't really write anything about it before I made the video. So uh, it came off a little awkward. But even though that no one commented on the video, I did want to give it another chance. Uh, I'm just going to say this right now. But I'm not going to do it in this video because I already have a next review planned already. I already have the next video planned. And for people who don't know already, you know, I have, I've been starting to review Studio Ghibli films right when they started back in 1984-85. And I'm starting a thing where I review them in chronological order. So the next movie, for anyone who doesn't know, is going to be Kiki's Delivery Service. So I'm going to bring up the three next shows in that video and not in this one because I already have the next video planned. As for the three shows that showed up in the last video, I again, I feel really bad for not even saying what the shows were in advance, but the three shows were uh, one of the most memed shows of 2017, Gabriel Dropout, uh, the aptly named Daily Lives of High School Boys, which I already know I'm going to get a lot of... <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of stink eyes from people at my school just for saying the name alone and the show that I'm going to be reviewing in this video known as the Junji Ito Collection. And considering that I'm a huge fan of horror, well, the choice was pretty obvious. So here is the one, the only, the Junji Ito Collection. The Junji Ito Collection, also known as Ito Junji Semicolon Collection, is a horror anime series that was directed by Shinobu Tagashiro, who directed Diabolic Lovers, written by Kaoru Sawada, It was made by Studio Dean. It came out in the winter of 2018 and existed of 12 episodes. The series is based off of a series of short stories written by Junji Ito, who is known across the horror landscape as the god of horror. Ever since he submitted a story in 1987 that turned into his first manga known as Tomi, he has made other works that, just looking up what they were about alone, is very creepy enough for me, such as Uzumaki, which is a story about a city plagued by a curse involving spirals that later reveals something far more sinister, and Geo, I think I'm, I think I'm pronouncing that wrong. <laughs> I think I am, at least. Uh, it's a story about a couple who is being chased by a horde of undead fish with metal legs. Trust me, it sounds absurd now, but wait until you actually read his stuff. It's fascinating as hell. But regardless of what the story is about, for years, he's been known for taking his characters and putting them through situations that no sane person would ever imagine. Uh, whether it's through body horror or grotesque imagery or basically the most disturbing shit that you'll ever see in your lifetime. And of course, when you have a successful story, it's bound to get adapted into cinema. And in this case, Ito has had his fair share of adaptation, starting with a live action film series around Tomi spanning eight films from 1998 to 2011, uh, another live-action film based on Uzumaki that came out in February of 2000, and an anime OVA about Ryo that came out in 2012. And it was announced back in late June of 2017 that short stories from two of his works, the Junji Ito Masterpiece Collection and Fragments of Horror, will be adapted into an anime series with two OVAs around his first manga, Tomi. When Ito was asked about this, he was as excited about the release of the series as his fans were because even though he likes the live-action adaptations of his works, he always thought that something wasn't right because they looked different from the manga, so he believed that the show, the anime, was of high quality and that it would accurately capture the horror that he's been portraying in the manga. But the question is, did Studio Dean pull it off? The short answer is no, they didn't. One thing that adds to what makes his work so nightmare-inducing is the amount of detail that he puts into every page as he makes it to where it looks like nothing you've ever seen before or ever thought of before. It adds to the shock value that he's known for. Well, as for the anime, <laughs> Studio Dean has none of that. They somehow made it to where all the mystical terror and the little details in every page were gone. And instead, we got a show that has the same animation level as, let's say... Claymore, where the animation is very choppy, the characters are distorted, and the colors came off as 
bland and uninspired. In other words, it's the wrong type of horror that Studio Team was aiming for. But wait. There's more. Because the animation is nothing like Ido's work, most of the series came off to me as a comedy, rather as uh, the form of terror that we've gotten used to seeing from Junji Ito. Uh, one example is the first story in the very first episode, where instead of one of his more popular, scary stories to get people on the edge of their seat right at the beginning, it was a story about an 11-year-old boy named Soichi, who is a recurring character both in Ito's manga and in the anime. And while the shorts with him in it were fine, they were, in my opinion, nowhere near terrifying. Especially in the first episode, where it's the perfect place to establish to newcomers of Ito's work and what his work is all about. It's like introducing someone to Joe Pesci, but instead of showing him his movies and his acting career, you introduce him to his rap career. Stealing don't kill without feeling, so I went in casinos before they start dealing. All about respect and intellect. Only mess with the women that pick up the check. As for most of the other stories in this show, they are pretty underdeveloped and have no definitive ending, which isn't a bad thing when it comes to Junji Ito, uh, because sometimes he just does that to add to the mystery of the story. But what Studio Dean does so poorly is that not only is the pacing crap, but they structured it to where there would be a long line of stories that had no clear ending or resolution and are rushed to the point where some of the stories fail to establish the characters enough for us to care about them before they eventually die or they experience whatever the hell Junji Ito makes them experience. But the one thing that I gotta give Studio Dean credit for on a positive note is how they adapted Ito's ideas on social commentary. While the show doesn't look like anything great, the ideas that it plant in your head are pretty intriguing as some of the stories represent the unrealistic and overbearing family expectations, the constant pressure that we put on ourselves to get better at something, and his criticism about how people can be very shallow and superficial. The one thing that I thought the show did pretty well consistently was the sound and the music. The opening and ending of this show isn't what you expect from a dark horror anime, but the fact that it stands out makes the music very interesting to me. And as for the sound, I could say that out of everything in this show, the one thing that really creeped me out was some of the sound effects that they made. But the problem was, is that with one really good sound effect, there was like three really bad ones. And the poor audio quality in general also leads to some questionable voice acting where most of the voices don't match up with the characters, and when they do, it still sounds pretty bad. After watching this show, I can confidently say that this show is very harmful, mainly to newcomers, into the world of Junji Ito. So I'm gonna say this right now, uh, just to get out of the way. I think, you know, a couple other people probably said it before. I, I don't know, I don't know who else has said it, but I'm just gonna say this as a precaution. Uh, to anyone who has never heard of this guy before or has probably heard this name once or twice but is curious about what he does or what he's made, don't watch this show. Stay away from the Junji Ito collection. My fear is that this show will give the wrong impression to any horror fans or people getting into horror because this show, although it does have Junji Ito's name on it, doesn't accurately portray what he's made over the course of his career. If you want to see raw terror that really makes you think and really sticks with you, again, I highly suggest you go and read Tomi Uzumaki or any manga that has his name on it. Because, to put it lightly, this show is just a very faint, cheap, money-grubbing shadow of something legendary. That I'm gonna give the Junji Ito collection a 5 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching my Junji Ito review video. If you like this video, hit the like button down below. If you want to see uh, any anime review videos that I make in the near future, you can hit the subscribe button either on the screen or down in the description. And if you want to see any, any anime review videos that I made in the past, there's a number of videos on the screen as well as more in the description and more on my channel. And with that, my name is Payne. And I'll see you in the next video where I review Kiki's Delivery Service.